But to start off today, I, I want to say I'm sure you can all remember a time where you grew up thinking one thing, only to find out years and years and years later that you were just completely wrong. Um, New Zealand does not have hobbits. Who knew? <laughs> um, but you see, for me, um, call me dumb. But until a couple of weeks ago, I always thought that you breathe in and out of two nostrils at the same time, that I've got two, I used to. Um, but I found out, someone told me that 90% of people in and out of one nostril at a time. Don't believe me, get your finger, but hard with a mask when you get home. Breathe, and you'll notice it's only coming out of one side of your nose. Um, and you see, um, it took someone to tell me, it took someone to show me in order for me to see something differently. And today as a church, what we're doing is we're starting a new series. We are going to go through the Gospel of Matthew. And the theme which is underpinning it is ICU. It's not intensive care unit. We're looking at ICU. We're looking at how, how we see God, Jesus. We're looking at how he sees us. And we're looking at how he sees those around us. And a little bit like my gospel revelation, a little bit like Tom's word last week, my prayer, guys, this, uh, this term is that the Spirit breathes life on us as a church, that, that we get a, a new revelation and a fresh revelation of who God is, that, that we get a fresh revelation of who we are to Him, how He sees other people, and we see the Spirit move in power, okay? And 2020, nine months ago, you know, who would have guessed this is a year where the foundations of the world are literally going to shake. You, you see, it, it's a year where in 168 days, your lives have been turned upside down. That for some of you, you're, you're reassessing your work situation, maybe by choice, maybe not. Uh, speaking to a lot of you over summer, you're kind of saying, well, it feels like there's a moment in time, God, what am I going to do? Where am I going to do it? And, and you're kind of looking for a change. And I just want to say, guys, this is a moment in time for us as a church. Uh, this is a moment in time for you individually to, to kind of take a step back and say, I am not just going to go back into the way things were and the routine of how we've done things, but I am going to take a health check. Uh, I am going to ask the hard questions. I encourage you, get a blank bit of paper, hold it up to the Father and say, Father, you write the next chapter of my life. Uh, Father, you write the next chapter for East End Church. You come and you breathe on us in power. And in fact, guys, I want to pray right now before we get into the word. Father, I want to pray uh, that through this series and at this moment, you will speak to us. Uh, Father, I want to pray that as we learn more about the author of the word, the word will come to life. I see you. Uh, I want to pray, Father, that you will change our contact lenses so we can see ourselves and other people as you do. I see you. I want to pray that uh, you will give us a renewed hunger and a passion for the people around us here in East London. I see you. I want to pray, Father, that uh, once we get a bigger picture of who you are and who we are to you, that that will enable us to go and be salt and light on the streets around us. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Okay, so guys, um, we know Jesus. We know he, he brings light out of darkness. Um, we know he brings life out of death. Uh, we know he brings sickness out of healing. And nowhere more are you going to see that than here in the Gospels. And you think being born is a pretty big life event, no? It's probably one of the biggest. A um, little bit of trivia, the most popular day to be born in the UK, 25th of September. Um, put your hands up if you're born in September. There we go. It is the most popular month to be born by quite a long shot, nine months after Christmas. Um, but September, you're not so special after all. <laughs> um, but you see, being born is a big event, and the Son of God coming to earth, Jesus, it's a big event, it is, absolutely. But it's interesting that only two of the four Gospels record the birth of Jesus. But all four Gospels record what we're looking at today, and that is the baptism of Jesus. And as we go through the, uh, the verses today, there's just two questions, guys, I want you to ask yourselves, both as, I'm, as you're hearing me talk, as you go home, as you read the word again. And the question is this. What does this show us about who God is? I see you. Uh, 
And what does it tell us about how God sees us, how, how Jesus sees us? I see you. And so we are going to be picking up um, Matthew 3. We're looking at a guy called John the Baptist. Um, this guy, John, he's, he always comes across as a little bit of a strange fella in the Bible. He, he's a little bit like the Bear Grylls of the time. He, he's walking around. He's got his camel skin. He's got his belt on. And he came to announce this new era. He came to say, hey, the way God is going to deal with the world is about to change. For, for so long, it's been about your daily washing and your daily ritual. But a time is coming when the Son of God is going to come to earth. And, and what's, going to, what's going to matter is this powerful one-off moment of surrender. And so, guys, if you've got your Bibles, if you're online, we're picking up in Matthew 3, um, and we're going to start in verse 11. It says this, uh, John speaking. I baptize you with water for repentance, but after me comes one who is more powerful than I, whose sandals I am not worthy to carry. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. Boom. Then Jesus came from Galilee to the Jordan to be baptized by John. And John tried to deter him, saying, hey, I need to be baptized by you. And do you come to me? Jesus replied, let it be so now. It is proper for us to do this, to fulfill all righteousness. Then John consented. And as soon as Jesus was baptized, he went up out of the water. And at that moment, heaven was opened. He saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and alighting on him. And a voice from the heaven said, This is my son, whom I love. With him, not just pleased, with him, I am well pleased. Okay. okay. So, what we're looking at first is how we see the Father, how we see God, the Trinity. And uh, here in the baptism, we, we get like this picture. You, you get this snapshot, you get this portrait of the Trinity at the baptism of Jesus. Now, I've got no hope, guys, uh, in 10 minutes of trying to explain the Trinity. Um, I think someone once said that if you, Augustine said, if you deny the Trinity, you lose your soul. If you try and explain it, you're going to lose your mind. Um, but what I want to do, I want to pull out just one thing. Um, one thing I find fascinating. One thing I hope will help you see God in, in a bigger picture. And it's this. How the story of creation helps explain the baptism of Jesus and how the baptism of Jesus really brings to life the relationship of the Father, the Son, and the Spirit in creation. Because you see, if you read Genesis 1 and Matthew 3 very carefully, there's a lot of similarities. You see, the first one, I've said this before, but in the beginning, the Spirit of God was hovering over the water. The words that was used is as a, as a bird would hover over her young. The only other time you hear this kind of terminology used is here at the baptism of Jesus where the Spirit descends like a dove. Uh, Genesis 1, Matthew 3, you've both got water. You, you've got a voice from heaven. Let there be light. This is my son whom I love. Uh, Genesis 1, and it was good. Matthew 3, he was well pleased with whom I am pleased. And in both cases, you're getting this picture of the relationship between God the Father, God the Son, and God the Spirit. And you see, what this means is the creation story helps us understand, and it sheds light on the baptism of Jesus, that in Jesus, you are a new creation. In Jesus, you have a new beginning. The old is gone. The new is here. But you see... The baptism of Jesus, it also gives us insight into the, this beautiful relationship between God the Father, God the Son, and God the Spirit. And you see, C.S. Lewis once wrote this. I find it really helpful. Um, it says this. When a Christian kneels down to pray to God the Father, he knows that what's prompting him to pray is God the Spirit. And he knows that his knowledge of God comes through Jesus, that, that if you want to know what God's like, you look at Jesus. So he, he's praying to God the Father, he's prompted by the Spirit, his knowledge of God comes by looking at Jesus. And it says that man is being caught up in the life of the Trinity. He is being caught into God, up to God, by God. Um, I, I, I think that's a beautiful picture. And some writers have kind of described the Trinity like, uh, I don't know if you like Strictly Come Dancing, but it, it, they describe it like an eternal dance 
The, this dance which has been going on forever and will go on forever. And it, it, the Father, the Son, and the Spirit are there. They are dancing around each other. They're revolving around each other. They're honoring each other. came up through the word Rach brought. His nature is love and relationship. The nature of God is love and relationship. And I am a rubbish dancer. Most of you probably know that if you've seen, I hate dancing. But we are called to imitate this dance. Now. Uh, we are called to imitate this dance made in the image of God. And the nature of God is love and relationship then we are made for loving relationship with God and with each other. Uh, with God and with each other. And so, guys, I hope, I find that fascinating. I encourage you to go read that, but that this gives us this picture of the Trinity. But what I want to do now is I want to uh, have a look at what this actually shows us, not about just how we see God, but how he looks at us. And I find it fascinating that here, before Jesus has done anything, you know, he, he hasn't healed anyone, uh, he hasn't taught anyone, he has he's done nothing. nothing. And this voice from heaven comes and says, This is my son. With him I am well. See, he was loved not because of what he did, but because of what he did. Uh, he was loved not because of what he did, but of who he was. And a lot of people don't realize that when the Father is speaking, he's actually quoting two passages from the Old Testament. He is declaring at the outset of Jesus' life and ministry, he is saying, hey, here is the king mentioned in Psalms 2. Uh, here is the suffering servant mentioned in Isaiah 42, that Jesus, my son, has come to earth and he is going to rescue, he is going to save, uh, he is going to become the servant, he is going to die on the cross, and he is going to bring you back into a relationship with me. Now, I want to jump to uh, Galatians, if you've got that one, there's I find an amazing, amazing, amazing passage, and i oh, oh, it's so relevant, and I'm going to try and bring it in a bit. It says this. So in Christ Jesus, you are all children of God through faith. For all of you who were baptized into Christ and clothed yourself with Christ. Um, I love that imagery. Uh, yeah, it's kind of like we take off our rags and we put on his righteousness. Uh, we take off our rags and put on his righteousness. And what that means is this. You know, a little bit like clothes is your uniform. NHS, it's a uniform. That our uniform is Jesus. Our identity becomes Jesus. Uh, a, a little bit like your clothes are the closest thing to you. They go with you wherever you go. When you clothe yourself with Christ, he, he's never going to leave you. Um, I don't know if you like dressing up. If you do, it's like when you dress up, when your kids dress up, they imitate someone. You see, it says when we clothe ourselves with Christ, we are called to imitate him. But the, the biggest one, I love this and so relevant for today, it says, when you clothe yourself with Christ, when the Father looks at each and every single one of you, he sees the perfection of the Son. Uh, he sees the perfection of the Son, and he is able to look at you and say, hey, my son, my daughter, with whom I am well pleased. You see, uh, a couple of weeks ago, I was watching America's Got Talent. Um, Chuck a photo up. This guy comes out on stage. His name's Cody Lee. And if you haven't seen him, go Google him. Um, this guy, he's 21 years old. He is blind. Um, can't see. He's got autism. He's got Addison's disease. And he can't speak. So he, he comes out on stage and he's to start as he can't get a word out. But he is one of only 25 people in the world who can hear a song and repeat it pitch perfect. And so he, he comes out and he sits down at this piano. He can't even see and he starts playing. And while he stutters when he talks, he can sing beautifully. It's like a sound of heaven. He sings the song. And the thing which struck me at the end, his mom comes up and she puts her hand on his back. And the way she looks at him, with love in her eyes, she is so proud of him. Guys, that 
is how your father looks at you because of Jesus. Because of Jesus, when the father looks at you, he sees the perfection of the son. You see, another one, there's a, a, another story about the elephant man. You might have heard him, heard of him. This guy, uh, his name was Joseph Merrick. He was born in 1860. And he was uh, rejected by his parents. He was given away at birth. He was um, treated like an animal, severely deformed. And he was taken on all of these tours around the circus. Uh, people just looked at him, paid money to look and laugh. But one day, some people found him, and they became his friends, and they, they took him, and they, they taught him how to speak. And you want to know what some of the first words that came out of his mouth were? He said this. He said, I am not an elephant. I am not an animal. I am a human being. I am a man. And then he goes on, and he says, one day he was sitting around with his friends, and he goes, if only my mum could see me with such wonderful friends, maybe then she will love me. But you see, no. Uh, it, it's not maybe b- because of your wonderful friends you are loved. It is you are loved full stop. You are loved full stop, my beloved son with whom I am well pleased. And you see, so often for a lot of us, we grow up thinking like the elephant man, that if I did this, I would be pleasing to God. Uh, if I didn't do this, God would be pleased with me. We, we, we kind of go through life in this never-ending cycle that uh, Jesus becomes like an example that we never live up to and we fall short and we feel like a failure as opposed to knowing that Jesus is my saviour. He is my saviour. Now, I've always found it a little bit odd. Um, John, Jesus asked John to be baptised. I don't know if you've ever found that one a little bit. You're looking at it and it says it in the verses we read that John's kind of like, hey, hold up. <laughs> hold up, Jesus. I think you've got this the wrong way around, mate. I think that, hey, surely I should be getting baptized by you. You're like, like, what are you doing in my place? And what am I doing in your place? What are you doing in my place? And what am I doing in your place? And you see, Jesus is saying, hey, I have come to be a substitute. <laughs> that, that my mission in life is not just to get baptized, even though I don't need to, but you do. My mission in life, I have come to live in your place. I have come to die in your place so you can stand in mine. So that you can clothe yourselves with the righteousness of the Son and the Father can look at you and say, my son, my daughter, with whom I am well pleased. Now, I want to finish up. um, But back in New Zealand, there's quite a big gang culture. Um, and I was reading the other day about this guy. He came out of, uh, of that way of life, and, and he said something which I think is so profound. He said this. Nobody is born with a patch on their back. He's talking about gang culture. Nobody is born with a patch on their back. What you are born with is you are born with a son of God or the daughter of God permanently written on your forehead. Uh, and he said that often you go through life, and the stuff that you do, and the things that people say to you, and the things that you say to yourself, you can start to that starts to fade a little bit in your eyes. But he said, that is a promise that will never fade, never go. You are a son and you are a daughter of the living God. You are a son and a daughter of the living God. And as we go through ICU, God wants to remind some of you of that. That that your worth and your identity is not in what you do, it is in who he is. Uh, Your value comes from not from what you do, but from who you are to him. You see, your identity is not that you are unemployed, that you are single, that you are black, or you are white. Your primary identity is that you, are a, you have the authority to be a son and a daughter of a father who created you, who designs you, and who loves you more than you will ever know, ever understand, or ever comprehend. That is your identity. And you see, uh, through lockdown, over the past six months, you know, some of you sitting here, you may have royally screwed up. You may, you may have messed up. There may be stuff in this room you are proper ashamed of. But I want to say this to you guys. There is no situation. There is no circumstance. There is no grave. There is no pit. There is nothing where the love of the Father, the, the grace, the forgiveness of Jesus, and the power of the Spirit, the Trinity three in one, the love of the Father, the forgiveness of the Son, the power of the Spirit that cannot take you from 
turn your life around, put your feet back on a rock, rescue you, redeem you, and clothe you in the righteousness of Christ. Okay? And you see, I think this morning, um, as Charlie brought, some of you need to know that God sees you and he knows you. Uh, And if you are struggling with work situations, I see you. Uh, If you're struggling in relationships, I see you. (laughs) If if you're struggling with uh, injustice and oppression, I see you. If you are sick, I see you. That that Jesus wants you to know he sees you and he loves you and he cares for you. And this series, we're going to see the eyes of Jesus on us. And today, as you leave this room, as you hang up on YouTube, guys, I want you to know this. The Father knows you. And the Father loves you unconditionally. And, and he wants you to leave this room with that he is far bigger and greater and indescribable and more powerful and more amazing than you will ever, ever, ever understand. And he loves you more than you will ever know or uh, comprehend as well. That you are loved. That some of you need to hear these words this morning that when the Father looks at you, he says, my son, with whom I am well pleased. He, he says, my daughter with whom I am well pleased. I love you. I love you. And I am going to finish up. Tom's going to come up. And I just, we're going to have to leave this room, but I just, I'm just i conscious of the fact that we have not gathered together for so long. Um, you get the chance this morning for someone to pray for you eye to eye. Uh, if you want to be filled with the Spirit, I actually think this is a season as a church where we're going to see the Spirit move in power. If you want to be filled on the back of what Tom said, what's come up in worship... Guys, just stay where you are. There'll be a chance for people to come and pray for you. If, if, if you want to have a greater revelation of how, how, how great God is, someone will come and pray for you. If, if, if you just want to know that God actually sees what you're going through and you want someone to pray into that, let's all go. <laughs> he says, I see you. Um, but guys, I'm going to pray. Um, so good to see you again. I'm going to pray and then I'm going to hand over to Tom. Yes, yeah, so Father, I just thank you this morning that uh, just the joy, <laughs> the joy you give, Holy Spirit, the joy that we find in you and the joy that we gather. Um, and I just pray that, yeah, as we, we take off our, uh, the warm-up stone, that we can run the race for you. I pray that you will come, Holy Spirit, and this series today, this week, in the quietness of our homes, you will just remind us of who you are and who we are to you. Uh, Help us see ourselves as you do. Um, And I just pray, Holy Spirit, that, yeah, you will move in power um, in this room. In your mighty, mighty name. Amen. Amen. Guys, so good to see you again. Uh, I'm going to hand back to Tom, uh, and we'll go from there. Cheers, guys.